Hey there, Floss Tube. This is Kathy, the hands-on designer. I am coming at you, let's see, it's a Monday evening. Um, I don't think that I've ever videoed, well, I know I've done a video in the evening before, but never on a Monday. So we survived Friday the 13th, so we're gonna give this a go. And you're also getting a slightly different view, mostly because the lighting, well, the lighting is, is a lot different this time of day, plus, um, we're getting um, the sun setting a lot earlier, so we're I'm gonna kind of do it from this angle. So today um, I want to have a little tutorial on how to do some of the pillow, the small pillow finishing. I talked about doing this um, a couple weeks ago when I had my last video with my sister here, and well, unfortunately, some things came up and life got in the way a little bit. So here we are now, um, ready to uh, to talk about small pillows. So this is a, a one example that. I'm, I'm going to use and I'm going to refer to. This is the um, the small that goes with the uh, Carrots and Cottontails farm. Those are the charts that have the, the three different um, pieces in them. There's the sampler, the sign, and then of course the small. So Carrots and Cottontail farm. Also uh, Red, White, and Moo. That's the small from um, Star Spangled Swine. So we'll talk about those first a little bit, but most of my questions lately have come from um, both the Harvest, well, from the Chalk Full series, uh, this that's the one with the jar, and then, of course, a small. And with that, I've introduced um, some hand-dyed trims from Lady.Creates. And you can see I've done a just a slightly interesting finish with that. And then also... This is from the one that just came out, Boo. And I actually did the same treatment with the twill tape, um, but I just finished it in a slightly different way. And I'll tell you, um, I'm making it hard on myself because there are seven in this series in all. And I've kind of, okay, when I did this one, okay, I, I was like, okay, this is, I knew I wanted to finish with the trim this way, but then I have a tendency every once in a while, I like to change things up. I, I don't wanna say I get bored, but I like to challenge myself. So here's my challenge is, can I come up with seven different ways to use twill tape in all of these finishes? I don't know, we'll see, because I'm already working on the next one. Um, and uh, these come from, these are hand dye trims from Lady.Creates. Uh, you can purchase them at uh, your local and online shop, and you can also see what um, Lois has to offer on her Etsy shop. I will put all the information below. So, but we'll, we'll talk about those in a minute. But let's first talk a little bit about just some of the basic construction for something like that. Now, I like to use um, just fun cotton fabrics. This one, I you'll see this this particular um, check a lot only because it is. I somebody said, oh, you must really like that fabric. I'm like, yes, I love this fabric because it is. Can I get it to focus? It's not black. It's not blue. It's gray, but it's a deep. It's chalkboard gray. It is like the, I always, I, I put it to somebody, the period, perfect period, gray, period. That's it. <laughs> so I just love this fabric. I did purchase this at Hobby Lobby. Um, typically, I do usually like to use what I call quilter grade cotton. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have a quilt shop here in my hometown. Um, I also order from a few online sources um, to get fabric bundles and things like that of coordinating fat quarters. So yes, fabric by the yard can be, it can be kind of expensive, but for these small pillows, what I really like is the fact that you don't need a whole lot of fabrics. You can buy just a fat quarter. And that's why I like to buy fat quarters that kind of coordinate. Um, lots of times you'll see, this is a bundle I actually recently purchased. Um, this had, this is from Fig Tree. I just, I loved all these. I am also a quilter. I'm not saying go out and buy all this. I like to quilt. And when I have, um, when I have a spare moment, insert eye roll here, um, I do like to uh, just go ahead and, and make simple table runners or just something like that. Um, I don't do fancy schmancy patterns. A lot of times I just do either half square triangles or, or just squares. Um, I just make something, I let the fabrics kind of speak for themselves, just all the beautiful colors. So anyway, um, so let's talk about First, I'm gonna focus on just kind of this basic finish here. And for purposes of the video, here is my stitching. <laughs> I didn't have anything stitched that I could use for the video. Okay, well I do, but it's coming out in a few weeks, so I didn't wanna, 
no sneak peeks just yet, okay? We got plenty of time for that. So anyway, so for purposes of the, of the tutorial, this will be my stitching, all right? So what I'm gonna do is um, turn the camera down and then hopefully I'm on a different work surface here too, so we'll, we'll make, hopefully this works. All right, hold on. Okay, and we're back. All right, so I've got my stitching. Remember, because it says my stitching, so I know it's my stitching. And I've pressed it. I'm actually going to give it just a slight press again. I have my, my, um, my iron handy here. Now, when I press my stitching, I press on the back, normally, not the front. Um, and then I do use a press cloth. And especially if there's beads or buttons or things like that, a lot of times buttons I don't actually add till after. Um, so here we are. Here's all the extra linen. Now, normally I would not have a rectangular rectangle drawn there. I'm just using that to mark my stitching area, just to say this is where I stitched. Um, so what I like to do is, you know, play with my different fabrics. I have decided that this is the fabric that I'm going to add to the bottom of my of my stitching, and so that when I'm when it's all put on there, it'll look. You know, it'll look like that. Um, excuse me, bug. Um, so I need to figure out, this is the, the best way that I know how to kind of make nice um, straight little lines there. Okay, I do tend to like, on these particular finishes, I like the fabric to be fairly close to the bottom of my stitched image, okay? And on this particular, that would be the, the bottom line. So you can kind of see that is actually my, my red check fabric. It's about a quarter inch from my stitching, my stitched image area. And same thing here. I am fairly consistent with that kind of, of a look for a pillow like this. I like the fabric to be fairly close um, to the, the, the cotton fabric to be fairly close to my stitched image. So I'm going to take um, and I'm not necessarily going to worry about cutting all the, the, the top and the sides just yet. I'm going to more concern myself with the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and line it up next to my stitched image. And remember, that's all that line is there. Pretend like my stitching came down to there. And I'm going to measure... Um, I really kind of like to go 5 eighths. Uh, from the stitching image. So I'll put my my stitched image on my, my mat, my cutting mat. I've got my ruler and I've got my rotary cutter and I'm going to line it up so that the 5 8 inch line on my ruler lines up with the edge of my stitching. Okay, and the reason why, now I know I said I like mine a quarter inch. I use a walking foot on my machine. Now, um, if you have a sewing machine that has a walking foot, I definitely suggest using it. I have found, I probably leave a walking foot on my machine, I would say 80% of the time. Um, because a walking foot feeds the, the two fabrics, then feed through the presser foot at the same time. So nothing shifts. All right, and I found that out the hard way. Um, I tried using my walking foot. Somebody said, a quilting friend of mine said, oh, you should be using your walking foot. I didn't know I had a walking foot, so I put the walking foot on. I'm sold on a walking foot, let me tell you. Um, if you're lucky enough, so they even have walking or machines with walking feet where like it just drops down into place. Mine, I have to like unscrew practically half the machine to get it to go in. But So I've lined my ruler up. Five eighths. Well, what got me saying this is I feel like my walking foot is a hair over a quarter of an inch. So that's sometimes why I kind of fluctuate between cutting a half inch from the image and five eighths from the image. I would rather cut five eighths, but I can always sew it a little bit closer. I can't add fabric back. Okay, so just a little bit of safety there. So I lined it up and I'm going to cut the bottom of my, this is the bottom of my linen, mind you. I know it looks like cotton, but it's my linen. All right, so now I have a nice straight edge, five eighths of an inch away from the bottom of my stitched edge. Then I found the fabric that I was gonna use. And this is about, let's see, I know about what size I like, and I always cut more than I need. That's about four inches deep. And I'm gonna cut a nice straight edge. 
it's most likely already a nice straight edge, but I just want to double check that it's a straight edge. Then I'm going to take the right side of my fabric and the right side of my stitching and I'm going to line my nice straight edges up. Now, if you want to, go ahead, just take a little time to make sure those are lined up just like that. If you want to put a few pins into place, you can. There's no need to over pin it. I would say maybe one or two, um, three at the most. And then go over to your sewing machine and sew along here a quarter of an inch. All right, through the magic of television, <laughs> that's a joke people um, I've already done that so remember that line that's the end of my stitched image and then here's the fabric that I sewed on so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna iron the it, the extra the seam towards the cotton fabric away from my stitching all right and again I'm kind of doing it on the back if I really want a nice crisp I give just a little bit of a, a spritz. I like, I don't know, I'm kind of crazy about nice crisp edges. Okay, so now I've got my stitching with the fabric attached below. A lot of times I'll even kind of, when I'm determining like how much fabric I want to leave on the bottom, I even kind of lay it down and I do one of these. Kind of do, give it a visual. <laughs> you know? Just so you can kind of imagine how much fabric you want to show at the bottom. And here's a clue. A lot of times when I'm making these little pillows with a little bit of fabric down here, the reason why I like stuffing these into like little baskets or um, little arrangements. And so a lot of times I put the fabric just on the bottom so that when you set it down into the basket, because if there's greens or an edge, a lip on whatever basket it is, um, you don't want to lose the stitching. Now, what generally happens is I leave this long enough, the, the attached fabric, so that you get a glimpse of the pretty fabric and all of the stitching. All right, so it just really kind of creates a nice look. So I've now attached my cotton fabric to the bottom of my stitching. Now I need to trim all four sides up and you're about ready to make your pillow, okay? So again, I tend to really like my, um, my seam close to my stitched image. And so in this case, my, the three most popular measurements for me are quarter inch, five eighths, and a half inch. And if I measure this, yeah, I'm right at about three eighths between the stitching image, excuse me, there we go, the stitched, at the edge of the stitching image and, and my seam. So that tells me I trimmed five eighths of an inch from, from everything. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Scoot all that. So I'm gonna use my ruler and count one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna line everything up. And this is now I'm first cutting from the side. So I trimmed that. And if you're not sure, start by cutting three quarters of an inch. And if it looks like it's too much for you, then you can trim a little bit down. And what I'm using, again, is I'm using the edge of my stitched image um, to, 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 to measure the 5 8 inch from. Now, in this case, I drew a straight line, but a lot of times with what we stitch, the, the edge of the stitching is not, you know, it's, it's not a straight line across. We've got this different, this varied edging like this. So I line my ruler up with the very tip and make sure I get a nice straight cut across. All right, so I'm gonna do, I've done the one side and the top. Now I'm gonna do the opposite side. Then here I am going to decide how much of that fabric do I wanna show. Um, I'm thinking I want about that much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to doing this. I want about that much showing. So let's measure it. I want about one and a half inches of fabric to show that's to there, all right? So again, quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm actually gonna cut this one and three quarters. So I'm gonna take my ruler here, line up. Now what I'm lining up to is I'm actually lining up to my seam 
to determine how much fabric of the cotton fabric to leave. Okay, so I'm going one, two, three quarters, one and three quarters, cutting along there, and I now have my pillow front, or my, yeah, my small pillow front. This is my stitching, this is my pretty coordinating fabric. I am ready to put my, put my, um, my, my pillow together. So what I'm talking about first is, in this case, I added all these embellishments after um, the pillow was actually completely constructed, um, stuffed and everything. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna grab from my bundle <laughs> and find a pretty coordinating fabric. And we'll take this, okay? And you can see I've already kind of cut from this this is why I, um, I, I love getting fat quarters because you don't need that much. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit here. All right, so this is already the, the size that I need. So I didn't even worry about cutting the, the under fabric to match um, because I'll trim that later. Um, now I'm using something that's obviously a directional uh, print. So I wanna make sure that this is you know, lined up fairly straight on here, although it is my back, so if I'm off a hair, it's not gonna matter that much. And I'm going to use the edge of my pillow front as my guide. So I'm gonna go, most of the time, honestly, I don't even pin. I'm so used to doing this, especially when you have the, um, the walking foot, it really does help. So I'll go over to my sewing machine, I'll kinda, you know, cause it's might've shifted while I, things may have shifted and the overhead bins as I walked over to my sewing machine. And I'm going to actually now sew a quarter inch from the edge of my pillow front on all four sides, okay? I like to finish it this way. You don't have to finish this way. You could use, you know, leave the opening at the bottom to turn. Um, but I actually kind of like this fun little way to do it. And maybe because I'm lazy, I don't know. Um, but I like to go zoop, zoop, Zip, zip. And I actually do it in four different um, stitches. I go from start to end. I don't like work my way down here and kind of try and gauge where that quarter inch is. You know, stop, raise my presser foot, turn it and go. I actually just go from the beginning to the end. I don't even back stitch over it because I'm gonna do the same thing on that side and it's just gonna lock those corners straight up. So I'm gonna cut on all four sides and now you're like, well, this is like, this is like a house with no door. How do I turn it? Um, so I'm gonna go on the back. Once I, you know, I trim my corners and I trim this extra fabric, but I'm gonna go on the back and I'm gonna pull this up. And I'm gonna just do a little snip and then I slide my scissors in and just open it up a little bit and I turn it from the back. And that way I get nice, um, nice finished edges and nice corners. Um, I don't necessarily always finish my pillows that way, but I would say in the most cases, that's how I do it. Now we can talk about, there's other ways. I actually have a tutorial on my website um, about how to do it where I, I iron open, like say a seam at the bottom where I left a little bit of room here. Um, that's a fun way to do it too. That's pretty easy. Uh, I started doing this when I did more wool felt, wool, and velveteen backs on projects um, because those different types of fabrics have a tendency to stretch more. So when you leave that opening and then you turn it, the stress on the sides of the opening tends to kind of stretch the fabric here and here on either side of the opening. So it's difficult to go ahead and, you know, you turn it, you stuff it, and then you whip stitch that closed. It's sometimes hard to match up the stretched backing fabric. That's why almost exclusively when I'm using that kind of a, a backing wool, wool felt or velveteen, I always open up through the back, all right? And then we'll stuff through the back and then I kind of do a ladder stitch closed and then I do a fun um, little uh, print like that over top or I might add buttons or I might do other embellishments, all sorts of things. So um, the sky's the limit there. That's a whole other video. So anyway, so that's how I went ahead and, and finished both of these pillows. It's pretty simple, isn't it? 
So then you're probably thinking, well, then she's got these cute little accessories. This part is kind of where you just sort of let your imagination go wild. Um, honestly, <laughs> this, this was the, I did this one first before I did that one. This was not part of the master plan in my head. This was just, um, this is called um, late in the game and I felt like it needed something and uh, I don't know what. <laughs> So I keep a fair amount of wool, let me throw that away, um, wool felt on hand. I really like working with wool felt. It's inexpensive. Um, you can cut, it's, it's pressed, so it's not woven. You can just cut it and it stays that way. I mean, you can see um, I've really kind of chopped this up. And if you're familiar at all with my designs, you know that I use a lot of wool felt in little trims and um, finishes and things like that. Um, stitching is my heart's desire, or no, it's not stitching. Um, uh, sunshine on a stem. I had you cut, um, I had you freehand some leaves. Boy, I threw a few of you for a loop with that one because I didn't supply a pattern for it. Um, so that's pretty much what I did on this, is I took this, you can see, this is fern green. And I just cut, I took a, a piece and I literally went like this and like that and just kind of did um, a curved line. And that's how I got the quote unquote template or the shape for my leaves that I added on. And then I felt like it needed a cute little button at the top. Um, I know I've talked about it before in different videos that I um, belong to Just Another Button Company's Button Lovers Club. That's why I joined things like that, to get great little embellishments. I had just happened to have them in my stash. And didn't that just make that come out so cute? All right, and I did this all actually after the pillow was complete. Um, I cut out my leaves and I sort of placed them on there how I wanted them. And then the leaves, you can see, are you know semi-attached and they're actually attached at the top through the button. And um, I attached the button in the leaves after this was all stuffed. There is a way that you can attach buttons on top and you can embellish with them. Um, I believe actually the gals at Just Another Button Company have a tutorial on their video or on their website about how to attach buttons. Um, you know, basically kind of from the top, you know, bury the knot underneath kind of thing. So, um, so anyway, that just kind of made that fun. And then again, I'm challenging myself with each one of these. I'm doing a fun wool felt addition with the small. Um, I did it as well. We have two more in this series. Um, this was spring. This was um, summer, fall or autumn or Halloween is coming out um, here in a couple of weeks. And um, I did, while the shape of that one's a little different, I did a very similar finish with a fun wool felt embellishment. And these are all, there's no template for these. I just freehanded them. Because wool felt is actually very inexpensive. Um, you know, you're talking for like a nine by 12 piece, you know, just a couple dollars. So they're, it's easy to have on hand. And if you cut something and you don't like it, cut it again, um, you know, trim it down, that kind of thing. So here I made little pendants, and again, I just added them um, with the buttons in between. And, and again, I went through the back on this one, and then I chose to get a little piece of fabric that I, um, I used double-sided fusible interfacing on the back of it, and, um, and just what I did, a, I had opened up, stuffed, and then I did a ladder stitch back and forth to close my seam, but then I wanted to make sure it was pretty on the back. So um, I just kind of uh, put some pretty fabric back there. So, all right, that's kind of a basic finish for something like this. So again, I the, the secret really is I cut the bottom of my, I trim the bottom of my linen approximately, you know, five eighths, three quarters from the bottom. Um, and, then, and then also my, my fabric that I attach also has a nice straight edge and I just line those straight edges up, do the quarter inch seam, press it, trim it all down, um, and there you go. It's pretty simple. Um, the, the hardest part sometimes is deciding what fabric to use. So let's talk a little bit when um, I started with the, oh, here they are. 
when I started with the, the chalk full series, I knew, you know, I was working with the Justin of the Button Company's ladies and they were doing these sweet little pin minis and um, they came up with that, you know, that great little jar. And there's going to be, I believe, a jar in every pin mini with throughout the series because, well, why not? It's a series about jars, um, but it's got this cute little heart and, of course, um, a beautiful sunflower. So I spoke to Lady Dot Creates and she came up with this lovely twill, hand dyed twill. I've used quite a bit of her velveteen, I've used her rick rack, um, chenille, lots of different things. And then um, I'm just always liking trying new things. So um, I worked with her to get the right color. This is the Boo color that just came out. And again, I'm, I'm constantly looking for new ways to embellish and to add on. So she had actually sent me a couple test pieces of the, the twill and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Um, so what I decided is um, one finish that I like to do sometimes is I actually lay down rick or rick rack, you know, so we're just half the, the, the rick. The rack is below, the rick is above. <laughs> no, that's not really real, but you know, I just joke that way. But where a portion of the rick rack just shows up above the seam, um, what you would do with that before you would add this fabric on here, you would actually lay a piece of rick rack on there first and sew through the middle of the rick rack. And what's nice about that is um, I generally just kind of lay it down, eyeball it, like how close do I want my rick rack to the to the to the top of the, to, or to the edge of the stitching. Once I lay it across and I sew down through the middle of it, that gives me a guide um, for where I'm going to attach this. So then same thing, I just put that over the edge. I follow my, my previous stitch line, there's my guide, I turn it, and my little rickrack points are standing up, and it's easy peasy. Well, that's kind of what I did with this, is um, I trimmed my, uh, my linen, and then I pleated the, the twill tape, and I'll show you about that in a minute, and then I just laid it across, and I'll explain that, I'll, sh I'll show that too. I laid it across and sewed it down in place then attach this, and it's very similar to the Rick Rack, it's just twill tape that's been pleated instead of Rick Rack. So I got my Rick Rack, or I mean I got my twill tape, and I thought this could be kind of fun if it was pleated. Well, how am I gonna pleat that? Because, you know, it's, it's pretty straight. So what I did, uh, most of this is just eyeballed. There's some machines have pleaters, um, you know, like a, like a pleating function that will actually turn the fabric as it goes. Um, on Pinterest, you see all these kind of cute little fork ideas where you, you stick the, the ribbon through the, through twines of a, of a, of a fork and you go like this. Um, you know, that would work too. I actually just kind of eyeball it. Um, so I leave a little bit kind of unpleated here at the end and then I literally just fold it over. I've done this enough now that my pleats are fairly consistent. Let's just measure that. So if we take the pleat, it's, it measures about, it's a, the fold is about three eighths of an inch. So I just literally go, you saw me do it, I just went like this. I folded it over. I'm gonna put it down here and I'm gonna iron it. All right, give it a nice, I love my wool cutting mat. It really helps things stay warm. Just be careful what you put it on top of. Um, I have some marks on my good wooden drafting table that I use as a work surface. Um, I'm trying not to be too upset about it because it is a work table, <laughs> but it got a few worn spots from the, the, the wool mat staying so nice and warm. Okay, so I pressed my first pleat, so if, can you see how I've got my, my, my marks in there? I, my, my iron is on cotton. I think very rarely do I take my iron off the cotton setting. Okay, so there's my first pleat. I'm just gonna kind of hold it into place and I'm going to start my second pleat. And again, I just turn the fabric. 
then what I like to do is I like the second pleat to snug up to where the first pleat ended. You can kind of see and feel with your hands where um, where the end of the where the end of that first pleat is. And I just make sure it's kind of the same the same width, and it snugs right up to the next one. And you can give it a little finger press if you want. That kind of is nice about the cotton. It has memory. And I'm going to put that down there and I'm going to iron it again. All right. And if you want to, I, again, you can put a little spray starch on it. I'm not even, because this is, you know, making nice crisp um, creases, I'm not even um, pinning it just yet. You can kind of see that I, I, I did this, I practiced a little bit. Okay, I did practice a little bit before we had to do it on camera. And um, so this is, got about three pleats, no, excuse me, four pleats right in a row. Okay, so it's, it's a little wobbly. So I do wanna make sure that I run a basting line to set the pleat before I even try to attach it to my pillow. So I give this a good ironing again. And if you want to, the, I, the first time I did it, I did put um, pins in here. Then I went over to my sewing machine and I just sewed right down the middle and, and got my, my pleat into place. And I just took big basting stitches. You could even do this by hand if you wanted, but honestly, I think a sewing machine would be easier. And I just fed it through like that and I didn't make a sample of that. I just now realized, and I should have, my apologies. Um, but you can kind of see, oh, if I move the, the baker's twine out of the way, you can see what it looks like once I, because there is a seam there. All right. Um, so I just did a large basting stitch to put, to lay the pleat down. Then, once I got my pleating, once I got my pleating where I wanted it, all basted down, then here's another, here's another of my stitching pieces. And I'm going to just square up the bottom edge here. I'm not necessarily going to measure a specific distance just yet. I just want to know that this is a straight line because then, okay, pretend that this is pleated because when I go to lay this on, I can use that as a guide to make sure that my pleated twill tape is in the right place. So then I'm going to take my twill tape and I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew through my twill, my pleated twill into my stitched piece across. And how I determine where I want it to be is again, is how close do I want my twill tape to be to my stitched image? Now in this case, I did, you know, pretty darn close. So I laid it about a quarter inch away from the stitched image. And I did the same thing on that one. So for this one, I laid the twill tape down, then I took my little piece of fabric, right sides together, and I used my previous sewing line as a guide, and I sewed through all three layers, the, the, the fabric, the twill, and the linen, and sewed all through all three layers. This, this folded down, I pressed it into place, I trimmed it under there, um, and then I was ready to put right sides together and, and make my little pillow, just like I did, um, just like I did in the first part of the video. So that's pretty much, I mean, I guess there's more technical ways that you could do the pleating of the twill tape, um, but realistically, I just eyeballed it. And if my pleats are off, like a millimeter, I'm not really gonna notice it because I'm putting it onto a pillow. That pillow's gonna get stuffed, so this is gonna kind of bow out a little bit, and you can kind of even see it sort of, you know, uh, frills out a little bit. So really, I don't see it, and I am the worst critic when it comes to things being even um, and looking really good. So um, I do feel like I think my 
my pleats are fairly even and, and it just kind of gives a nice little extra touch. So here on this one, I buried the bottom of the pleat under the fabric. Then with this one, I, like I said, I kind of challenged myself. I wanted to do something different. Um, so this was kind of a, oh, this one was a little bit of a work in progress. So I trimmed my um, linen. I added my coordinating fabric at the bottom like we've done. And then I actually laid the stitch, the pleated twill tape across over, over the seam. So if I lift that up, you can't see the, you know, you can't see the, um, the, the linen. And if I pull down, you can, well, you really barely, barely see the cotton fabric. So it's really pretty much covering up um, where the two pieces of, of cotton and linen uh, meet. All right, so I laid it across and I just top stitched it with my sewing machine. And I happen to have gray thread in my machine, which is, I always, I rarely change the color of thread in my machine. So it was a neutral. I didn't really like the fact that you could see the seam. I wish I had had orange thread in there. But then, truth be told, I probably wouldn't have liked the orange thread either. So then I thought, well, I'll actually try and do like a little embellished, like a little running stitch over it. Tried that. Didn't like that either. It's actually, you can probably still see it. It's still in place. Um, so, you know, my philosophy is when life gives you lemons, get a little bit of baker's twine. <laughs> And I think I own Baker's Twine in every color. Um, so I just, I love the little bits of gray. I love the added dimension. So I just cut a little length and I covered that puppy right up. All right. So I don't always have a grand plan when I start out with these things. Um, sometimes it just kind of works that way. But when you have tools and you know how to do the assembly, then it gives you the freedom to be able to do something like this. And I just, I just love this. It, it'll just set, like I said, in a nice little bowl or it'll be a leaner on a shelf. Um, you know, lots of different possibilities there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of assistance with knowing how to put all these sweet little pillows together. Um, I've been doing small pillows like this for many, 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 many years. Um, I just happened to pick these four just because I'm particularly proud of the finishes of them. And, um, well, I'm proud of all of them actually, but I just, I always like to keep pushing myself and trying something new. So, um, so there you go. These are fun little pillows. Um, you'll be seeing a new one here next with a little wool felt em um, embellishment. You'll be seeing that, I think, oh, uh, probably later this week check my social pages you'll be seeing some posts about it and then um, and then again the next um, chalk full will be coming out soon I actually just spoke with Miss Lady Dot herself and um, discussed the new color of, of twill tape and you can look at her Etsy shop to see what else she offers she always has some just really fun um, neat little things so information will be down below and um, I guess instead of turning the camera up, I'll go like this. <laughs> sorry, this is goofy. Anyway, I will turn the camera up. Okay, well, sorry, I couldn't lean down and look at you that way. Um, but I just thought I'd take a quick second to say thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for all your lovely comments. Um, I actually just recently checked and I'm um, by over 6,000 subscribers now. So I really appreciate all of your positive feedback. Um, I just love it. It, it. it makes it a lot of fun to do this job. And um, if you post pictures on your social media and you've either um, done one of my designs or did a finish the way I did it. Um, I just love it when you tag me or use the hashtag hands on design, that kind of thing. Um, it just, it means the world to me. And, um, in the meantime, enjoy the stitch and enjoy making those smalls. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.